Welcome um, for the last session of this Tuesday. We're going to talk about security, or a bit in a harder term, that there is actually a mini Drupal gathering every week, and how do we survive it? Who of you knows, who does not know, mm -hmm. what Drupal Gathering or Drupal Gathering stands for? Everybody, OK. Who of you on that day was actively updating his sites and hoping? <laughs> yes, OK, good. So this is what today is about. Um, Drupal Gathering was, at least for me, myself, a wake-up call that Drupal security and security in general in the web is not something you can just take uh, as easy. It is something that happens every week, and we will hear later on from Manuel more about um, what it is um, and how it works. Um, but it's definitely something that all of us have to realize. We recently heard that if you don't update your Drupal site, you might be going to change the world. Um, like we had with this huge leak of data in, um, in a lot of different places, which maybe are related to an unupdated Drupal site. It's not exactly clear. But yes. So who are we? Uh, I'm Michael. Um, and sorry for the screen. Um, here it's perfect. <laughs> but it's just a little bit. And I'm going to tell you anyway. So I'm the CTO of the Macy Group. The Macy Group is a, um, is a group of three different type of companies. Um, I'm Macy.io, I'm Macy Labs, and I'm Macy Metrics. We do all kind of different things among hosting, building websites, and um, SEO and conversion. And as we build a lot of Drupal sites and as we host as well, we're very interested in security and that we have very secure Drupal sites. And the other person with me is Manuel. Yeah, my name is Manuel. I'm founder and CEO of the Drupal Shop Write Solutions. And we develop uh, DropGuard, which is a service to help Drupal shops prevent struggling with the next Drupal get on to automate Drupal updates. Uh, who of you knows how the release cycle of a Drupal security patch in uh, Drupal org happens? Mm, okay, only view. So Drupal has an international dedicated Drupal security team that crawls the code and reviews patches and checks if there are security issues. So that's a very good thing and that is one thing that only a few open source projects have and we can be proud that Drupal has it. But on the other side, you are responsible to apply the patches or apply the updates in time. So whenever there is a security patch available, it will be submitted to the Drupal security team. And then there is a big alert, oh, a new Drupal security patch. And the security team reviews this patch and then announce the patch publicly. That usually happens on Wednesday. So if you monitor Drupal security updates, you should keep an eye on the list on Wednesdays. Um, that means after the security patch is publicly announced, hackers also know about it. That means hackers can dig into the code, they can check which security vulner vulnerabilities are available, and they can write automatic scripts, they can write bots that attack websites automatically, and that's the big problem because usually they are faster, they are smarter with automation than we as a Drupal shop are. Yeah, um, so whenever there is a new security update, it depends on the criticality. There is a factor from one up to 20. Um, it depends on the, on the level with a 20 or, no, it's 25 even is the highest one. Um, Drupal get on had the security rating 25. And that means run and patch all your sites, leave your projects behind you and care about your site security because hackers usually are faster and they will run for your site as well. <clears throat> yeah, so these are the scores. You see them on the patch. If there is a zero to four, that means the patch or the update is not critical. You have time to update the site. Nevertheless, you should apply the update within, let's say, one month. If you miss too many updates and there is a highly critical update and you want to apply the update, then you ship a lot of new code, which means you need to test your site even deeper because there might be some bugs that you uh, can only prevent when you test very carefully. If you do the updates continuously, whenever there is a new update, no matter which criticality it has, then the risk 
is much smaller that your site breaks with an update. So then we have from five to nine, the less critical updates. So they are security related, but they are not critical. The same for moderately critical and critical, we treat them in the same way. And the highly criticals, those are the Drupal get on ones where you really need to apply the update um, in Drupal get on it was around seven hours. After seven hours, the, all, um, the bots already started with attacking sites automatically. Yeah, and that is called the zero day release. Zero day release means there is an update and you don't have any time to update your site. You should do this immediately, otherwise you need to assume that your site has been hacked. Yeah, and that answers also the question why it is very, very, very important to update the site. It is important for you and your clients, but also for the Drupal ecosystem. Because what happens when a site gets hacked, everybody tells, oh, my site is hacked, Drupal is not secure, I will move to another open source pro project or I will move to a propriety uh, project. Um, but it's not related to Drupal, it's related to how people handle updates and how the awareness of security is in the Drupal ecosystem. Um, in Drupal 8, it becomes even worse because we will, sh we will see a slide that Drupal is uh, in the version 8, not only built from backend modules, but also in the front end, there are many libraries that are combined together to provide a good user experience, but these libraries also need to be updated. It looks like this. In Drupal, Drupal 4 and Drupal 5, we had Drupal Core, we had some Drupal modules, and that's it. In Drupal 7, there was the library module introduced. That means Drupal projects are built on top of other libraries, external libraries that are hosted not inside the Drupal ecosystem and maintained, but outside the Drupal ecosystem. And we also need to take care about their security releases. And in Drupal 8, it becomes even worse when the Drupal project is based on Symfony. And Symfony has many libraries that also has a re have a release cycle with security updates. And there are other like NPM or Node.js libraries, front-end libraries, and libraries over libraries. And you need to take care and don't lose um, the time when you need to update or when an update is released for any of these libraries. And I think web applications in the future will be developed only using libraries or microservices more and more. There is not one big software you update continuously, but there are many, many small libraries and modules that you need to take care and update continuously to keep the security of your site. How can you stay informed where to get the information regarding security updates, at least for Drupal modules? Of course, Drupal Org. Then there is a newsletter and a mailing list from the Drupal security team. There is an RSS feed that informs you about new security releases. And of course, social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all the social media channels. But that's only for Drupal, not for the other libraries. If you want to take care of security updates, for example, in Symfony or in front-end libraries, you need to dis uh, subscribe to separate lists and monitor all these uh, lists or social media channels. And uh, the manual process, so the first and most easiest process is to ignore security updates because they are time consuming and you need to take your stuff from projects to apply updates. And uh, does somebody of you handle updates like this? Okay, I would not, yes? Oh, you are honest. Well, not, not, not intentionally, <laughs> no. <laughs> not willingly. It happens, it, ha it happens, yeah, because you are always too deep in projects, your developers don't have time, and to be honest, they hate doing updates. Every developer hates doing updates. Um, yeah, so if you do the trash up DB, that's the easiest thing. You apply the update just on your local machine, then you do um, reapply patches if there are some patches. If you don't know it, there are patches applied, you will lose them all and your site might break. You will see that in the manual quality assurance. Then you have somehow maybe a ticket system like Jira or Redmine where you create a task for an update, um, document everything, maybe assign the task to your customer, let him do the quality assurance, <coughs> uh, communicate everything to your stakeholders, 
then deploy the site and so on and so forth every Wednesday whenever there is a new update for each and every site and that's very time consuming and costs lots of money. And that feels like this, okay, because you sit around and wait until up, trash up DB is done, until you get the feedback from your client. Um, yeah, and that's how the process should look like. So either you have a, a dedicated support team member or dedicated support team, or you have support jumpers that are um, Drupal developers that usually work in projects, but they switch from time to time to the support team to have a rotating system, otherwise it's too boring to only apply updates every day. Especially if you are tr uh, a good Drupal developer and experienced and want to share your knowledge in your projects. So, if there's a new update, you create a new ticket in your ticket system, you reapply the patches if you remember them, then um, you commit everything to your repository and deploy it to a test instance. There you can run automated tests or manual uh, quality assurance by yourself or by your customer. Um, the communication takes some time of course and um, after that you want to deploy the site to the live server and communication and testing again. Now remember you maintain 100 sites and you need to patch every site in seven hours. How will you do that? And that's something we can learn from hackers because they are usually smarter and faster when it comes to hacking sites with security vulnerabilities. And Michael will show you now um, how you can automate this process to be secure continuously. Okay, thank you. Yes, so we want to automate every single piece of it. Basically what we want to do, we want to do nothing. We want to just continuously working and whenever there is an update, it should happen fully automatically. So let's first figure out what do we really need. So first of all, we need a monitoring tool. We need a tool that checks which modules are installed because not every Drupal site that you have, not of, let's say we have 100 sites, not every will have the same versions. It would be cool that all of them have the exact same newest version, but sometimes maybe QA didn't happen yet, testing the deployment didn't happen yet. So you need a tool that first and foremost knows about all your Drupal sites. Then you need to know which um, modules are even available. We just heard there is like Drupal.org, there's newsletters, but to match these, to know which module do I have installed and for which of the modules, which security level now is the critical one. So you also need a matching tool that tells you that. Yeah. And then we need a tool that does patching. And there are so many different ways on how to apply a patch in Drupal or in code in general. You can have regular patching, but you maybe have an existing patch on your Drupal core or any country module, so you need to make sure that the security patch with that function patch works together. You may be using already Composer to, uh, to download modules with Composer, or you use Git submodules, so the system that does the patching needs to apply submodules as well. Then maybe patches fail, so we need a ticketing system to inform if a failure happens, because then a human needs to look at it. Um, an automated tool is not being able to really fix um, merge conflicts or patch apply failure. So you need a way that if something fails to inform the team. And then as we all using Git, you wanna um, push that into Git, but you might wanna have different branches for different security levels. Um, so we need a system that is capable of handling Git and understanding and Git committing and pushing and merging. Um, and then we wanna test so we might have a continuous integration system that automatically tests every commit. Um, so we need to make sure that that first runs through and then deploys. Then we need fully automated deploys. So again, we don't want to do anything. So we just want to wait and it happens. And then at the end of all that process, we want to um, have a reporting tool that basically tells us, is it done? Which sites are not done? Which modules have been updated? Maybe integration into client information or all these things. So it's not an easy task to handle all of that. Luckily, there's us both, and we fixed that already. So what we're gonna show you today is what we did, how the tools that um, the two companies developed help supporting that, and how you can set it up. So this is how it looks like, and the session is over now. 
Okay, so that's the solution, but we're gonna go in step by step and we explain you exactly why did we do each step, how the tools work together. So first of all, what we have is the drop guard monitoring. So what you do on your production site over here, you install the drop guard module. And you connect that drop guard module to the drop guard site. And with that, drop guard, which is connected to all your production sites, knows, first of all, which modules are installed, and second, in which versions they are installed. And then, drop guard will query Drupal.org and figure out if there is an update for one year of existing modules and which security level there is. So the whole monitoring tool happens all at one site. You can log in there and you see all your connected sites and you see which status there are, is there a critical update for one, and we'll also see later on even more information. So, and that, and it does that for, it doesn't matter if you have even like death versions or patched versions or all that, so they are all figuring that out and understanding the different ways of how to installing a module. So let's continue here, and let's talk about first about the really highly critical one. So a one like Drupal get on, where we say, okay, we wanna just push that as fast as possible to the production branch and to the production site. I'd rather have a maybe functionality broken production site than a security hole in my production site. Because fixing a hacked site, especially in Drupal, can take days. Because you basically have to go through each database table and figure out, is there, should that node be there? Should that user be there? because you don't know exactly what the hacker is gonna do. So cleaning up an existing site is much harder than fixing a functionality that is maybe broken by, an, by a highly critical security patch. So what Drupal, Drup, DropGuard does, if there is a new module version available, it checks them against the security level. And within DropGuard, you can define what should happen based on which level. So the levels we before saw, you will find again in the tool and you can define different ways of how it should go. Then um, DropCard will automatically apply the security patch on your core or contrib module. So it doesn't matter if it's core or contrib, they both have the same security release cycle. And it commits them, this is how it is configured, so we configure it in a way that if the security level is above 20, um, please commit that directly into the Git. So DropGuard also has access to our Git. It knows how to connect it, it has access to push into it, it understands Git, it understands branches. And it can do that for plain code, Git submodules, or Composer. So however which tool you use right now, even if you're gonna continue upgrading in the future to say everything to Composer, DropGuard will support it, it will realize, oh, that, that, that is a Git submodule that has a plain code, and it will also realize existing patches so um, it will do all the handling for you. And the last thing, it also reports into Jira, in our case now, or there are also connectors to other um, um, ticketing systems to inform either about the success or about an error. Because it could be that that applying here of the patching and the committing does not work. Maybe you forgot to give access to the Git branch, so Dropbox can commit, or anything else is wrong, so um, there you have an information in Jira. So that is the whole drop guard side. And on the other side of Amazee.io, what we have, we have full automatic deployment on new pushes into branches. So what happens is drop guard pushes into the Git branch. On the other side, the hosting system also monitors that Git branch realizes there is a completely new commit. I will deploy that and it will also run automatic deployment tasks like Maybe your, um, your patch requires a database change. So you, that means you need to run Drush UpDB um, or you need to ca clear caches or anything else that maybe your site needs. At Amazee.io, every time you deploy, these tasks are executed fully automatically. You don't have to do anything. And with that system, we are basically safe from anything above 20. So whenever the evil Drupal security team decides to release another <laughs> Drupal get-on, well, it's not them, but um, if there is a new patch and it comes in, 
it will fully automatically deploy everything to the deployment, to the, the, to the production side. And yes, there is no testing step in that. But again, as I mentioned, it's only for the really highly critical security ones. You can still test later on, and you should, but the ones that are above 20 are usually the really bad ones, like there is an SQL injection directly, and you don't want to have your site vulnerable to SQL injections, because we saw, just search for Drupal Get on how many people spent hours and days in trying to fix their sites, and sometimes just reapplying a backup from a week ago and losing everything that happened in the last week, because they only do backups every week, for example. Okay, let's continue though. Not every security release is a crazy one like we are talking about right now. Most of them are either moderately critical, critical. So they are still security and you should still apply them, but they are not that super urgent that you really have to run and do it immediately. So what we do there, we see here, we can do a switch among inside drop card and we can say, okay, based on the security levels, we want to have a different process. You can go as crazy as you want. You can have one for the non-critical, one for the less critical, one for the moderately critical. In that case, we just do an easy one. Everything below 20, we just do another process. So what we do, we say non-highly critical patches, everything below 20, we apply to another branch. And in that case, we apply to the testing branch. How you call that? how in, depending on your hosting environment, how they're called, they may be different. At the Maze.io, you can call them as whatever you want. If you call them testing, if you call them drop guard, or whatever, it doesn't matter. And so what happens is, on if um, drop guard is pushing into the git branch, into the testing branch, and Maze.io is, uh, knows about the site for that, and will also automatically deploy into the testing site. But not only that, what you can do, you can tell Amazio to automatically sync the production site, like the database and the files. Because what you want to do, you want to do on the testing side, you want to test the new code with the database from the production. It doesn't help if, you t if here, if you test that with a three week old database dump. So you want every time a new code comes, you want to take the newest database from production and make sure that that actually runs. So you can do, we'll see that later, even fully automated testing. So what the Maze.io, if you kind of configure it that way, you can say, okay, I want to sync the database and the files from the production to the testing site in order for me to fully test and make sure that the new code really works, the clients can test and you can test. And in terms of processes, um, what you can tell, DropGuard has an understanding of in testing, so it knows that some patches need to be tested first, and has an understanding of these statuses, and it connects that into, in our case, Chiro or others. And so you can create a ticket and say, okay, now please does the testing. How you do that? If you do it fully automatically, if you assign it to the client, if you have a support person, if you have somebody of the development, it's, it's your choice, but you should test on that and then if testing is all good, what you do, you merge that Git branch into the production branch and the code, again, will automatically be pushed to the production site, automated tests will be run and your site is secure for your security. So that involves still involves some manual stuff. And I mentioned before, we wanna do it fully automatically. Um, so let's look into that. If you want to do automated testing, you need another tool that actually can do that. There are hundreds out there. You can choose to do unit testing. If you want to write unit tests, there is a visual regression testing, which compares two sites visually, sometimes just pixel-based, sometimes even DOM-based, so they understand CSS changes and stuff like that. Um, what you can do with our hosting stuff, um, as for us, a lot of things are based on Docker, you can actually start, let's say, on Travis or on Jenkins or on CircleCI. These are just like the continuous integration tools that we all know. Um, you can actually start a Docker container um, with a Maze.io running inside, and you can take, again, the database from production and run fully automated tests. So you can make sure that, let's say, the code that you're gonna be 
pushing is not going to change anything on the visual appearance of your site. And that's what you want. You want to make sure that if I now apply that patch of panels and I maybe see there there's a template change, I want to make sure that this does not change my website because it should not. During regular feature updates, obviously that changes will happen, but in security stuff, it's super easy to test because nothing should change. So visual regression testing tools, for example, are very good. But of course, unit testing um, inside Docker containers help as well to make sure that your workflows, let's say there's a change to workbench moderation, and you want to make sure that your workflows you configured with your clients together are still the same way behaving, so you can test all of that fully automatically. And then these tools, together with Amazio, have the possibility to say, that test passed, and if that happens, now automatically merge. So you can fully automate that. Every time there's a security update, you can fully automate it. Disclaimer here, that's not easy, and you need to still write the tests. Our tools are not gonna write the tests for you. They're just gonna support you in if you have tests written already to use them again and again. But it's a good argument for like clients if they ask, okay, should we write automated tests? That is a very good reason, because that thing happens every week. And so if you have 100 sites every week, if it takes you one hour for every site, you need two people, <laughs> or even more, to just do that. Like, they're gonna be no doing nothing else than just testing stuff. And, um, and if you look right now, if you subscribe to security updates, every week there is something new. And as Manuel mentioned before, we are adding so many new libraries. So suddenly we have updates from Symfony and other stuff and Gossel and Twig, they also have security updates. So it's just gonna be more. So you really wanna think that you have a tool first that monitors and the hosting environment that supports doing it full automatically. Okay, now we looked at a lot of graphs and arrows. Now we wanna actually see it in, um, in real time. So let's see it. So first of all, what I'm gonna show you is the highly critical. We learned before, we're gonna deploy that directly to production. In our case, this is the master branch. So what happens? We have a Drupal site. Somehow, it appeared to be 8.1.1. It's a couple of weeks ago. There is at least one highly critical security update among, because we are at 8.1.10 right now. So, and we are connecting that to DropGuard, and what DropGuard is gonna tell us here is that there is an upgrade from 1.1 to 1.10. It came out on the 21st uh, of September, and it is highly critical. We see there's another module, the DropGuard module itself. There is no update there. You're safe with that module, but Drupal Core is vulnerable, and we need to upgrade as fast as possible. DropGuard is doing that fully automatically. You don't have to do you actually need to press like and hit the button. Did that go? No, it should work. Oh, I see. Okay. Better. I can't see that that works. Because I don't get the top part of the key. Can you share yes, the, uh, the mic below? Okay, can you hear me again? Perfect. Okay. Can you hear me anyway? Because I was in sync with the Yes. Thank you. Okay. So what DropGuard is gonna do, it's gonna create a task, an update task. Um, and we can see that here. So we are on the task tab, and we see here that is gonna put Drupal core from 8.1.1 to 8.1.10. Again, we see it's a highly critical. So um, it's gonna do that. After um, some minutes, in that case, we see here it actually took two minutes to do them. The updates were applied, and, um, and it pushed the changes into the master branch. In that case, I configured DropGuard to skip testing because we push it anyway to production, but you can configure it that way. Should, do you still wanna go back to DropGuard and click tests passed or not? Or you can also do that automatically, but um, in that case, I just did that. 
So we are now drop guard push to master, and we can see now in our master branch, we can see how there is a git commit by drop guard. So drop guard has write access to our git repository, and it will tell us what it did. So it tells update the Drupal from 8.1.1 to 8.1.10. And that is on top of all the other ones. And um, what is now the hosting environment going to do? It realizes, hey, there's a push, there's a new commit. I'm going to deploy that. So Amazio is going to start deploying that. And a couple of seconds later, we can see we have a Slack integration. So deployment statuses are flowing into Slack. And we can see here that the Amazio bot um, committed or publi uh, deployed on the master branch. It took him a minute and 35, 34 seconds. And we can see here what exactly has been deployed. And we can see that the Drupal update 811 to 110 by drop guard. And this is the git hash in case we need that. And if we go back to the Drupal site, we have an updated, fully up to date Drupal without needing to do anything at all. All you need to do is you maybe get a Jira ticket or you maybe see a Slack message and you have to be happy <laughs> because your Drupal site is going to be, and that happens fully automatically for 100 sites or 200 sites. And we have that running for, um, for Amazing Lab for around 80 sites right now. And so on Wednesday evening when it comes out, you do not believe how good it feels to not do anything. Because <laughs> at DropGuard, uh, at, um, at Drupal Geddon, we called people ahead because the Drupal security team was so nice to announce that there is something very big coming. So we had at least people on, on deck to do it. But we updated 70 sites by hand. And now, if the whole thing happens again, you, you don't do anything. You see just messages in Slack flowing in. All the sites are updated. Maybe one or two doesn't work um, because maybe somebody had a patch in there or whatever. But yes. Okay, let's look at it with a critical um, update. And in our case, the testing branch that we want to do is called DropGuard. And what we also want to do, we want to synchronize the site automatically. Because last time we deployed to the DropGuard, it was maybe three weeks ago, and the code is very old, and also the database is very old, so we want to synchronize automatically the stuff from our master site so we can really look at two sites at the same time. Same process again, now we start with Drupal 8.1.9. Um, that was actually the case a couple of weeks ago when the, um, the 8.1.10 came out, which Drupal will tell you, hey, there is an update. It will not help you actually updating it, but it will at least tell you, and that's nice. Um, so again, the same, we go to DropGuard. DropGuard tells us, hey, um, 8.1.9, there you should to update to 8.1.10, and now this time it is critical. It is not a highly critical. So the other process will start. And the other process um, looks this initially same the, the same way. There is a task. The task will start. Two or three minutes later, the task will be applied, and it tells us git branch to test changes are in drop card. So we did not push to master yet. It's just in, in drop card. And now what's going to happen is uh, the deployment system of Amazio is not deploying master. It looks at the drop card site and it, uh, the drop card branch. And it will realize, hey, there's a change there. It shows you the URL, in our case, the, the development sites, which drop card one of them is. So we see here the, the branch in there. Um, is a bit a critical one, a uh, long one, but that's okay. So we can also test it there. And again, we see updated Drupal from 8.1.9 to 8.1.10 by drop guard, blah, blah, blah. So far, the same thing as we had in master, just as another branch. What comes now, though, is a bit of speciality. So within Amazio, you can define deploy tasks. And deploy tasks can be different per branch. So what I can do here, I can say if you deploy into the drop card branch, I want to define special tasks. And the really cool one is here. So every time that the deployment system of Amazio deploys to the drop card branch, it will first of all throw away the database that is currently there. And then 
fully automatically sync the database from master to that branch where you are right now. So the synchronization, you don't have to worry about. Um, it does it fully automatically. And then we run all the other stuff. We run OpDB and we can run cache clear. That's a regular. But the really cool stuff is that on the deployment, you can fully automatically synchronize two sites and be sure that the debate database is up to date. <coughs> if we look at the deployment log, we can see here that um, the deployment system tells us executing before deploy task, drush s call drop, because uh, we have a dash y in there, and um, it tells drush to not ask us. I mean, it still asks us, but it will do it automatically. It's not an interactive system, it's fully automatically. So you just wanna tell drush, okay, just please drop my database. That happens here. And then the second one we see as cool sync at master default, which means synchronize the master database to my local. And that will happen here fully automatically. And we have the newest database from master on DropGuard on that side. And now we can really look at the two sites. Um, we can run visual regression testing. We can run unit testing. Whatever you want, you can give it to your clients. Um, to test, you can test it yourself. And we can see here on the drop guard site, we have 8.1.10. We can test it, and when we're happy, we can merge the drop guard branch into the master branch. The same thing as before will happen, we deploy to production. So it's still a bit of things involved, but again, these are not the highly critical ones. And we can also do that for all feature brand updates because there are a lot of updates among the Drupal community of all the contrib modules that are not related to security. But you still wanna keep up to date because if you wait too long, the security patches will not apply anymore. So we wanna update them on a continuous base and such a system allows us to not worry too much and even fully automatically test. That's it. Um, if you want to know more about either DropGuard, how that tool works, or Amazio, how the whole deployment system works, and what you can do, we both have booths here at the, um, at the sponsor hall. Um, come and talk to us. We're happy to show you how it works. Um, we have demos, we have test sites, we have horrible broken websites that need, need, need to be updated immediately, and you can do that yourself. And yeah, and if you have any more questions, we are happy to answer them. Uh, yes, please. You maybe uh, want to repeat the question. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the question was if DropGuard considers um, all the updates between 8.1 and 8.10 or only compares 8.1 and 8.10. So you mean between Drupal 7 and 8? Yeah, any version, any module, it, it works different. It, it, it affects only a feature version that I'm not considering. My, my version is now 22.0. Sure, DropGuard will detect it. I mean, DropGuard will not detect if uh, the security issue is in a feature of your site that you don't use. That will be not detected, but it detects if your site is affected by the security release or not. Yeah, and the problem is, I mean, it's not a big problem, but the Drupal, the patches, they're only released to the newest version. So it theoretically mm -hmm. could be that the security release that came out was for a feature that got into the module three weeks ago, but you're using the module of a year ago, so theoretically you're not affected. But nobody is gonna check you for that. The Drupal security team just tells the newest version has a security patch, here is it. DropGuard will tell you that there is an update available and, it's, and it, that there is a security release. But if I'm not affected, it will update anyway? Yes. But nobody will tell you if you are uh, affected or not. The only way to figure that out is look at the patch, see what exactly it does, understand what it does, go to your own module, looking at it and realizing if you're affected or not. So. Correct. 
because the security team just says they actually release now. There's these um, shields on the Drupal.org. That's exactly that reason. Um, so it's only the newest version, but it's very dangerous to assuming, well, that version is now for 8.22 and I'm running 8.17, so I'm not affected. Um, you will most probably be affected of all the critical ones we have. They're going far, far, far back. Yeah, um, the question was if those two tools can work separately or only hand in hand. And if there is a cost, then how much is it? Yeah. Um, so the tools work independent from each other. You can use either DropGuard with your um, own servers um, and integrate it with your own task and ticketing system. You can use Amazio without DropGuard just for hosting purpose. Um, for DropGuard, there is no cost for private sites and non-commercial sites, but there is a price for um, yeah, commercial sites, or if you want to resell it as uh, support SLAs to your customers, for example. And then there is a price per site starting from 9 euro up to 59, depending on how many modules you have enabled and you want DropCard to take care of. If you take both together, we give you a discount. <laughs> and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a good point. Um, I left that a bit out. So the question is, even though we do the production stuff, mm -hmm. shouldn't we still deploy to the testing correct. in order to do the testing workflow? Yes, correct. Uh, I was it's just wondering if that's something that you can just say, oh, well, I will credit this, or whether that would be a whole new thing. No. Um, so you can configure DropGuard, for example, to work as your developer would apply the update. That means whenever you commit an update to the master branch, you can merge the branch back to the stage branch, back to the dev branch, so that the updated code base is available everywhere. And then you can run your automated tests on the stage branch, inform your developers to fix something on the live side. Yes, it is a good way, a good idea to definitely deploy also highly critical still during that site, test it, have t Jira tickets or whatever ticketing system you use, and at least make sure that the site still works. Because, yeah, it could theoretically be that you deploy something, you go to the server page and say, hey, it still loads, good, next site. And then you realize, like, some sub pages are completely broke. Um, yeah, that's a good point, thank you. Not yet, but in a month about, um, it will also check like uh, the coder module which you have included in your code base, but it's not enabled on your live site, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was uh, something very new a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had the first time that the module is actually vulnerable just with being there. There was a huge debate at the end if it was correctly marked in the security level. Because the problem is the Drupal security team only knows the amount of actual installed modules. And Coder is a module that is most probably not a lot of installed, but maybe exists a lot. And um, so that was one thing that we actually as Amazio said, even though it's not a highly critical, we fixed it from an infrastructure point of view. So we said the access to the, that file is not, a, um, is not allowed at all. But that depends on your hoster if they are doing like mi mitigation actions from an infrastructure point of view. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of people were like surprised. Oh wow, now we even have stuff. Because it used to be just like, yeah, only the installed modules. And for example, the Drupal itself can only check installed modules as of right now. So there are issues also to check like not installed modules and Yeah. 
Yeah, so just repeat the question. Uh, the question was if there are any free tools that I re can recommend um, to monitor to monitor modules and to automate the updates. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. So um, yes, Nagios is a good option. There are also some other services. I think Drupal Status is a module that helps you to monitor um, security updates for all your modules, for all your sites. Um, to automate your updates, you can write your own scripts. You can use Trash, but um, it's very difficult to do the patch detection and to rewrite composer files automatically. Um, so, yeah, we do the development since one year. We started all uh, two years. We also started with our own scripts, and we see there is lots of details you always need to respect. But uh, the only thing is to write it by yourself. Mm. And you can configure Drupal that it sends you an email every time it realizes that there's an update. So if you have the update module installed and the email server works and your email address is in there, you will get an email at least from your Drupal site. So there's like another cheap way of doing it. Yeah. Um, we actually, at Amazia.io, you can configure custom cron scripts. We had somebody just running Drush up every night. I mean, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it, it can go very bad, yeah. yes, and you maybe want, you can also run automatic backups, so you maybe want to do that before, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the super, super cheap, and that's you should not do way, because usually, if something goes wrong, you don't really know what happened. So then you're gonna spend probably a lot of time in debugging um, and fixing stuff. So yes. Sorry, um, <laughs> 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 it's a problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, s uh, what versions of Drupal are supported? Uh, seven and eight. You can also run Drupal 6 on Amazia.io, but there is no... No Drupal um, support. Yes. And Drupal 6, there, Drupal 6 is a bit in a special state that the official support is ran out, but there are companies that provide the so-called long-term support, um, which means they are basically taking over what the security team did, but you have to pay for that. So the security team is only doing it for free for you for seven and eight, and for six, you have to pay a monthly fee um, with companies. So they are actually checking modules and making sure that they're up to date and stuff like that. And the reason was just that the, secu the Drupal forever said, we are gonna, mo um, the security team is gonna support the newest and the, the second newest version. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, apologies if this was uh, dealt with before I, I, uh, I joined. Um, in, in checking, Yeah, the question is if we um, monitor composer files, if we only update and monitor Drupal-related uh, Drupal things or anything that we included in composer. So currently it's only the Drupal things, but uh, give us three months about, and then we will handle all available PHP projects that you include in composer, and also NPM projects if you want to update um, Node.js or JavaScript files. Yeah, the question is if uh, DropGuard creates uh, tickets automatically or only updates existing ones. It creates tickets automatically, and you don't need to use um, the DropGuard UI. You can control everything from your JIRA. So if you set a task to a status, that means it's test passed. Then an action on DropGuard or on Amazia.io or any other hosting platform can be triggered. Yeah, and the, the updates in 119 is Sorry? In the updates for the security level 119 as well? Yes. Yeah. You can configure it whatever you want in here. That was just an example. Yeah, the um, uh, updates outside of Drupal where you don't have a what's it called the you don't have a rating R twenty five, which was well known for its cool. Uh, how are you planning to be able to 
same data mm -hmm. sets on any given day, any given day. So mm -hmm. you wouldn't do a, a yeah. joint production and then use these sets. You would just run a statistic testing. Yeah. So if I they don't have their own security team in the same way. Mm -hmm. So that's really a special thing in uh, Drupal that they have a security level rating. But other, tru uh, other projects, other open source projects, have at least a similar thing. They also have a, a security updates, and they announce the security level as well. It's not uh, 1 to 25, but it's uh, 1 to 100 or something like this. And uh, we crawl different databases. So there are different uh, databases like uh, VulnDB, which has vulnerabilities of other open source projects. We crawl them all together, put them in a database, and um, make the calculation if there is a new update and how critical it is. And map it to the 1 to 25 scale. OK, good. Then I wish you all a lovely evening and Secure drinking. Drupaling. And yeah, happy updating. Thanks.